Cool. Wow, that's good. Yeah, man. Hey, everyone. Welcome to uh, the sit down chat interview with uh, Miles Okazaki, episode 25. Yeah, man. <laughs> we're, we're like, we're already into it. So, uh, that you know. was, no, these have been here. For <clears throat> yeah, these have been weeks. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, yeah. this is all me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just us two here. There was, there was an engineer here for a second, but now, now it's just us. So, man, thanks for, thanks for stopping by, man. Thanks for having me. That was we a just, fun set. <clears throat> yeah, we played some music. Yeah. So hopefully you guys were able to catch that. And, yeah, man, uh, there's so much I want to talk about. One of the things, I'm going to grab this before I forget. Is, uh, <clears throat> you, brought, you brought over some stuff. <clears throat> but we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. But, but first bag. of all, I want to talk about... Uh, you're, so you're from Port, you're from Washington, but yeah. Port Townsend. Port you were born, and yeah. born there. Uh, well, I wasn't born there. I was born in Eastern Washington, but I grew. I basically grew up in Port Townsend. Did you ever mm -hmm. go there? I've been there. Yeah. You've you might have to get up on oh, this. Sorry. Yeah. 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 You've been to the. You can um, also pull it towards you if you I want. Think I'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you've been to the uh, workshop there or the festival? I play? played at some venue there with. Jesus, man, was it Aaron Parks? I well, can't Aaron, remember. You know, Aaron Parks is from uh, Bainbridge Island, which is right across he's, the water. Yeah, he's from, from somewhere over there, yeah. 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 And I feel like I have definitely played in Port Townsend, and I played at a kind of venue that was like a jazz club slash restaurant, and it's like yeah. a wooden, very wooden uh, yeah, design about, inside. Yeah, it's probably backstage, one of these places. I mean, it's a small town. It's like town yeah. of five, five to 10,000 people. I'm not sure what it is now, but... but um, yeah, there was a, uh, if, if you look on the map of Washington, it's like Seattle is the place everybody knows. And then you yeah. go west, and there's like islands and water and all that stuff, and there's a peninsula out there. And then Port Townsend is out there on this peninsula that's like on the corner. It's the very corner of like if you were coming in from the ocean, mm -hmm. you make a turn, and then you come in. Uh, it's there, so it's, 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 it's a really, you know, it's a pretty isolated um place but it's it's one of those places where they have uh well the hell is military um installations there like mm -hmm. this whole military uh i don't know what you what you call it but but like basically a base you know and 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 with all these housing and then it became like an arts uh institution called centrum okay so and then it was run by bud shank and then after a while um john clayton oh. took it over and when i was a teenager uh, I, I, or like early teenager, I was 88, 89 around there. I was, I started going there every summer and like mm -hmm. trying to soak up some stuff, you know. Cause so you, those, you've I mean, known those, the, so of John Clayton was, so you've known Gerald probably since he was a, a, I, a I, mean, I don't know Gerald that well personally. I've played with him a couple of times. Uh, and he's younger than me, I believe. I don't yeah. know. Uh, so yeah. He's quite, younger than I am. Yeah. So so I think when I started, he must have been just like a kid or something. You know, mm -hmm. I was a kid. I was like twelve or something. You know. So oh, he was probably like six or yeah, something. Yeah. So, um, uh, and then Clayton, John Clayton, was not. He didn't. He didn't live up there. He doesn't now. I think he lives in. He lives in California. And mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and so, uh, it was like the sort of, the contemporaries of those people. So like John Clayton, Jeff Hamilton. George Cables, like the sort of like they had a sort of group that would come up there. In those days, you know, you couldn't like get online and check right. stuff out. It was like whatever came to town, right? So, right, right. You know, I wasn't in a big city, you know. So, so that's that was like yeah, that was the first versions of uh, of the of this music that I checked out was that that stuff yeah. live, you know. Yeah. But your parents were, were artists, or your dad was a photographer, right? Like taught at Washington yeah, State, and my, your mother was a painter? So? Yeah, right. And then my stepdad is a builder. So they're all sort of like crafts people, you know, yeah. doing stuff with with their hands and with arts and things like that. Um, not musicians, really, but, but uh, my dad certainly was a jazz uh, fan. A huge record collection. We used to go out and see... Right. All the people and stories about going to see Mingus and Monk and people like that. And oh, Because cool. he went to school on the East Coast and yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and check stuff out. And, and he I, would tell you about the, all this stuff. Or, he would make me tapes, you know. Um, 
because I would be interested, like, I was always interested in learning tunes, you know, right. I'd be like, I'm trying to learn, like, Body and Soul or whatever, hmm. and he would make tapes, like, go through his record collection and find, like, 15 different versions of Body and Soul and make a tape of that. Yeah. So I, I was, I still have these tapes, they're like these tapes of just one tune. <laughs> a bunch wow. of which I think is a great way to learn tunes. I don't think he really. Of really, course, yeah. I don't know if if it. But was he like wasn't. A, this is your 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 father who was a photographer, right? Yeah, yeah. I think he just so intuitively he was, figured that was probably a good way to learn tunes is to check out a bunch of different versions of the tune. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's <laughs> it. That's what I tell people today, at least. Yeah, you uh, figure out what's kind of in common. You know, of they usually go to if it's in D flat, they go to D major on the bridge, and that's you know that's like. Every it happens. That's part of the tune, definitely. Right. But there's other parts of the tune that are kind of, you know, they change depending on who's playing it. You know. But as far as like your musical, how did how did the music thing? Were, was there anything before the music? Oh like, yeah, yeah. Were drawing, you into drawing, photography or drawing? Drawing? Yeah. Oh, okay. drawing. I was really into drawing and artwork and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, like mostly pencil drawing, pencils and pens. Um, did you do some of the design for your own albums? And I've stuff? done. All I, of I them. feel like I've I've, yeah. I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah, I've done all the drawings. Uh, it's kind of hard because I don't practice it. So every time I go around and make right. an album, I got to spend another month trying to <laughs> get the chops together. <laughs> I, I can't remember the exact story, but I, I, as soon as you said that, I, I remember someone telling me that you had worked out this whole thing for one of your albums. It was like uh, something with words. Like, was it for Mirrors? Was it? It was. I feel like it was that Maybe, album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I went real overboard on some of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In terms of like trying connect all this stuff together you know the, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> music encoded in the you know just sort of like symbolic stuff and shapes and music shapes and visual shapes and all those things not that anybody really notices but it's, it makes me you know, right happy i guess but yeah. is there so yeah. you're half japanese yes yeah, half japanese which is it your father your or father your, okay yeah. cool. father's japanese from hawaii so okay he doesn't he's not really like I don't even know if he. I think he's never been to Japan, but wow, yeah, but really? his parents are from Japan. Okay, so yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's so many communities outside of Japan, like Sao Paulo, and like where you can you could have never been to the actual country, but of course, it's so yeah. Japanese. Like if you go to Liberdaji in, in Sao Paulo, it's it's Japan basically. Yeah, really. um, which is even stranger for me as an American to go there because you see someone who speaks completely fluent Japanese, but also speaks completely. They are Latin American. Well, what? Now, There's maybe like, you know this. Is there a thing <clears throat> about the arigato, obrigado? Obrigado. obrigado. <laughs> is there a, is there so a, is the there Portuguese connection? went to Japan, uh, whatever, however many hundreds of years ago, and uh, there was no word for thank you. This is the story that I've heard. Is like there was no word for thank you in Japan at the time. And so they taught them uh, obrigado from... You're, and saying, so, you're saying arigato Japanese? Origato comes from... Portuguese. Really? Yes. Wow. So origato That's interesting. I, I, uh, is a is a That's not you know, some ancient a word. variation of, of, of obrigado, the Portuguese word, which there wasn't a word for thank you in Japanese when the Portuguese arrived. So oh, they what taught that says them about the Japanese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of, That's the story I've word heard for which thank you? <laughs> which I mean I'm sure somebody's gonna was is gonna Wikipedia it. But um Obrigado or uh, origato. What do you say when somebody gives you a present or something? You're just like, okay. You just like, yeah. Please don't kill me next. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, back then, don't give me some disease that's gonna to wipe out my entire family. No, I mean like between <laughs> Japanese, like not, not the co colonial thing, but like like just like you know culturally, like you know. Yeah. Somebody give, makes you some food. You're just like okay. Yeah, it's like yeah. <laughs> I was expecting this. <laughs> now what? Wow, that's it still deep. doesn't that's deep. I've always wondered that. I've always yeah. wondered that. If that's what I was. That's what yeah. someone told me. It was like the Portuguese went to Japan, hmm. and when they arrived, there was no word for thank you. So they yeah. they taught them this word. It could have been another story, but whatever the the story is, origato comes from obrigado. All right. Well, this falls into the category of people talk talking about things they don't know about. But yeah, I could have totally got but... some wrong information too. So <laughs> I'm not. I'm so not we'll, definitely not saying that so this is where it's from. Yeah, but that's, that, that, that's good. I like that. The, the, I, the some, for some reason, I thought it went the other way, or there was just some weird parallel evolution of language. It but, could have went the, the other way. It could so have been different. maybe there was no word for thank you in Portuguese, and yeah. they got obrigado from I feel, I feel like it's more likely. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, so, so... So your dad, but you've been to Japan, obviously. I've, with... Yeah, I've been there a bunch <clears throat> of times, you know. Just, I mean, never for, never for just a but as a vacation, musician, but yeah. just, just playing, yeah. yeah. More so when they used to have, like, the whole Blue Note circuit. You know, yeah, like the that was the time, the man. Tokyo, Nagoya, I got Osaka. A, just a, I got a little taste of that. I mean, there, yeah, it used to be. I used to go with Jane Monheit. We used to do that once a year or so, and it was like a week in each of those clubs. So it was a like week. A, oh man, That's we did gone. a week: Tokyo, Nagoya, Osaka, Fukuoka. It was like a month in Japan. Man, I, I didn't even get yeah. to do that. I think my first trip to Japan was in 2005 with Joshua Redman, and we did two nights at every club. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think we did three nights in Tokyo. Maybe it's exaggerated in my mind, but I feel like it was a long time there. I feel like we were there for like three weeks or mm -hmm. something like that. Because I could, I remember by the end, I could kind of speak some Japanese. Oh know? wow! Yeah, because I'm, I'm I'm pretty good with that, but the written part is like impossible, you know. But 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 just hearing languages, I like I like to sort of sit around and. I have a good yeah. friend who was, uh, he's a killing guitar player. I went to high school with him, and he was like a couple years older than I was. And when I remember when I first went to tour the school, he was practicing in a practice room. And I was like, oh, my God, man, it's like I'm totally out of my league. Like, when, you know, I was walking with my parents through my high school and there was a couple of guitar players just practicing. And uh, it sounded so good to me at, at my at, you know, at that time, just the tone and everything. Uh, and this guy, his name is Chris Young and, and he lives in Austin now, but he he moved to Tokyo and lived there for, I don't know, 10 years. Hmm. So every time. Basically, all my first trips to Japan, he was there. And uh, he learned Japanese, and I don't know, by the, after two years, he was pretty fluent. But he, yeah. I don't think he ever learned to write it. But yeah. it's like one of those things where, like, if you really want to learn the characters and really learn how to, to yeah. read and write, it's, it's like a whole other level of... Yeah. Well, the sounds are all there. <clears throat> they have fewer sounds than English, even, mm -hmm. you know. So it's not uh, like if you learn, if you go to learn French, like, you have to learn new sounds. So that's, yeah. that's hard, you know. Japanese, it's like, I don't know, 20, the sound, 20 yeah, sounds every, or something you, like If that, someone yeah. says a word to you in Japanese, you can repeat it. And also, you could probably spell it, because it's spelled pretty much as exactly as it sounds. Yeah, yeah. The Zs are Zs. Yeah. The, the Ss are Ss, and yeah. the Ks are Ks, you know, it's like things like that. Yeah. Although people still misspell my name all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I get an S in the middle, mostly, yeah. Yeah. Like the motorcycle or whatever, kind of the Kawasaki. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so that, yeah, so that part of the family, yeah, Hawaii, Japan, yeah. Did you guys go to Hawaii a lot? I went there a lot when I was a kid, mm -hmm. yeah, visit grandparents. That's you know. one place I still haven't been there. Man. Really? Never oh, been man. to Hawaii. No. And there's a blue note there, but, you know, you got, it has to be a certain type of gig to, get, to play that blue note. Yeah, what do you need to do? <laughs> well, it has to be a singer, or you have, you have to be playing with a singer, or it has, you have to be playing with Chris Body. Like, either, there's no other, there's nothing in between. Oh. <laughs> well, like, uh, okay, which you gonna choose? But so. Chris Body also has a, like three singers touring with him at the same time. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that'd be a nice gig. I mean, the, yeah. I saw once in a while I see like, oh, there's a teaching gig opening up in Hawaii. That'd be something interesting. <laughs> oh, you know, man. what if you, you know, that that's a that's a hard commute. Like if you wanted to go to <laughs> Europe or something, you know, that's oof, that's man. rough. It's yeah. great if you're going to Australia or, or Chile. Yeah, Japan. Yeah, yeah, it's man, all good. Go to... You're kind of committed to that hemisphere or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> man, so we... you, but you moved to New York at the same time I did. We were just talking about this earlier, like yeah. 90, 97. 97. So we have pretty much the exact kind of arrival we're, and yeah, to we're... now experience. Yeah. And we all, I think we were kind of both playing with singers around the same time, like 2000. Four or five. You were playing yeah. with Jane. I was yeah. playing with Liz. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I remember that that time period. Um, I was I was playing with her from, yeah, you know, mid two thousands. You know, mm -hmm. sort of. Yeah, two thousand whatever three to two thousand. I was curious about because like I, I was wondering, like, how did that happen? Because I think of all the music that you're associated with, like Steve Coleman, and your music, and you know. Um, even my friend Gaetano Partipilo, who I think you recorded with first, and then I did something oh, with him yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Um, and then, and then I, I I was like, okay, so Miles is playing with Jane My Jane Monhart is like, it's a little bit 
something I wouldn't expect you to be doing at the time, but probably a lot of people wouldn't have expected me to be playing with Liz Wright either. But it was something I, I kind of, I made it a, a, a point to do that. I don't know if you did the same or if that just kind of how that Well, I mean, came you know how it is. Like, you know, even as musicians, we kind of pigeonhole each other, especially critics, you know, they're like, well, right. that person, they do that thing or whatever. But I mean, I was always, my favorite thing was always just playing songs and learning exactly. songs, you know, so... It still kind of is. It's just that my definition of song has kind of expanded to include, you know, different types of things. But, right. but, um, I mean, I went to to school with with Jane and her husband Rick. Oh, okay. And so we knew each other. We were just hanging out. Time. So yeah. it was like time, like, oh, I need a guitar player. And she was really into um, music that involved guitar, like a lot of Brazilian music. She was really mm -hmm. into and going to Brazil a lot, and and so I would play. Uh, you know, nylon string and then electric, you know, so right. rhythm guitar. So, but, um, I mean, that was kind of my whole thing from when I started to, when I was like, you know, and I had my, when I moved to New York, my teacher was Rodney Jones, you know, oh, you know Rodney? Oh, well, uh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, well, you want to work or what? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, I want to work. I mean, I, how do I work? And he's like, well, you gotta, first you gotta learn how to sight read because I could yeah, like a terrible sight reader. You know, it's like you got to do this, and you got to know. You know, you got if you, you want to work, you got to play with singers. You know, right? Cause that was his thing. He was like, he was playing yeah. with like, you know, he was playing with Lena Horne. It's like mm -hmm. the highest level of singer. You know, Ruth Brown and stuff. But, but um, he was like, if you want to do this, you you know, these this is your skill set. So get it together. You know, and uh, learn learn tunes. And and I was already interested in learning. I mean, it wasn't hard for me because I, I I like learning tunes. I was pretty good at it. I could memorize tunes really easily. You know, right. Uh, just because I like melodies, and it's like anybody learns tunes, you know. And so, uh, so there's nothing special to, to. I mean, I was always, uh, I think, a little left, you know, in my sensibility, you know. So, you know, it's sort of like, well, I'm out on the road with Jane, but I'm kind of doing my weird little notebooks of right. music theory and stuff on the side. But it's just sort of yin and yang. But you did know. you mix the two? Like, were you on the... Because I, I talked to some students about this is where I think of someone like you who's definitely doing your thing, right? But then you could probably... You were probably on the Jane Man, uh, Manhart gig, like, not really... Were you blurring the lines or were you just kind of just like, I'm doing this gig and I'm going to do this gig to oh, whatever's no, going to work for her. Is, yeah, in that gig, I, I'm... I'm doing what's appropriate for that. Game. Right, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. I'm not, not, so, I'm not interested in like. Oh, I'm so <clears throat> like, I'm so in such a straight jacket in this gig. I got to sneak in my thing, and it's like no, you were having no. a good time and playing the music. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just. I find it. I like the challenge <clears throat> of doing something really well. Right. For that context. So you know? the so reason why like, I'm, I was yeah. I was curious about that is because I feel like some people. I've I've been in situations actually with, where there's incredible musicians like. And they really have their own thing. But mm -hmm. when they come into a situation like that, it could be just a record date. Mm -hmm. It's not going on the road. Like you were on the road with Jane. But like, let's say Jane just said, hey, I just want you to just record date. You come into a record date and they're just like, I'm going to do my thing. I don't care what's going on. Like, and I, I feel like that's a little bit a diss to everyone. Like also the other cats playing in the band is a little bit like, okay, we get like you have your thing. And that's really hip and that's cool. But this thing that's happening right now that we're all getting paid for to do at the same time is something else. Yeah. Who's going to, like, <laughs> but, <laughs> that never I, that never occurred to me to do. I mean, that's, like, so unprofessional. Like, to, to me, like, I always felt that that was, like, I really want to be professional. Like, right. you know, well, like, or you just say, like, like I don't, like, that's cool. Thanks for the call, but I don't want to do that. Yeah, or, you don't know? do something. If you then, say yes, you should show up. And complain about it or don't right, do right. something. You know, it's sort of like, you know. I always felt that was a, that was a, that was a weird thing. So that that's why I yeah. say like, it's cool to see people who can, they they just they they do their thing with whatever the situation that's given to them. Yeah, you know? I mean, it, I guess you know you. I don't know. It's 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 a sort of. A it seems bit, obvious, but it's not. <laughs> it, it does. It does seem obvious, uh, but it, it requires somebody to sort of pull your coat to that. I think a little bit, you know, because yeah. so, so, you know, like when, again, Roddy Jones. I bring him stuff I was working on. It was some weird, sort of weird science type of stuff. Right. And he'd be like, Man, you know, that's that that's great, but who cares? <laughs> <You know>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, eh, I guess nobody. I don't know. If you don't care, then I guess nobody does. You know. So. Right. You know, which is, it's maybe a little bit, it's a little tough love element, but I mean, 
you know, it's, it's, but, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's be like, look, this is the way you, if so, this person, if you're going to hang out with Lena Horn or whatever, this is, you act a certain way. You, nobody, nobody cares about your thoughts mm-hmm. or, or whatever. Just do what, you know, just do what's sort of helping the situation, do what's required of that, <laughs> that right. gig, whatever. You know, I mean, it's, I just, I never had that really like mm, feeling like I need to do my thing. And show, all the time. Show, show, uh, of all course, the time. you want to Eventually, do I want to do my thing, but I'll do it on my time, or I'll do it, you know, I'll do it in a <clears> context that's appropriate for that thing. And then if I'm getting paid to do something, I mean, you know, I mean, that's that's like it's like a. You're uh, playing with good musicians. If somebody's also. chosen to have me involved in this thing, I want to like do it well, right? I that's kind of how I think about yeah. it. I was like, you could call, you could have called anyone, and there's people yeah. who could do this gig better than I can. But yeah. you called me, so I'm gonna at least try to do the gig. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's kind of like a thing like that. Like, I'm not going to come in and be like, well, I'm going to put all my delay and my overdrive and, you know, and I'm going to play my, you know, it's like everything's going to be altered and like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it works for some, you know, it's just, it's just never my way, really. It's just, I'm not, yeah. I, can't, I don't feel like I don't come from that, that sensibility, you know. Yeah. yeah. For, for me, it's like, can I, let's see how, how much I can get away. With. Like, you know. Let me see how much I could really play in this vibe. You know, mm-hmm. it's like how much I could, I could still feel like I'm, you know. Well, you always something. sound. I mean, you always have your sound. My so. thing is not that out either. It's, I think it's pretty straight ahead. Like, but it's not about out or in or whatever. It's about like you. Your sound is identifiable. Like when I hear Mike Moreno on a thing, I could tell that's you. You know, and, and like, and so, you know, and you have a sound that that is it blends really well with things. i mean you've, you've you took we were talking earlier about all the you know the the minutiae of the of of all these different sounds that you can get with a guitar you know mm-hmm. and i'm like well i don't know i just kind of plug and play you know <laughs> but you know if you put a lot of care into that and people know like well if i if i have him he's gonna really try to get the right sound you know yeah. it's not gonna be like just this weird somebody coming and scribbling on my project you know so, right right you know so I think that that's, that's something that's very interesting to cultivate, you know. Yeah, a lot of the sound stuff that was presented to me was presented to me from guys uh, or, or, or anyone that was kind of did something else. Like mm-hmm. either, like I was saying, uh, a sound engineer or uh, it could be a guitar player that does like rock mm. or more pop stuff or uh, really in that world. And they say well i you know what you're doing is cool but you should really <laughs> work on your sound like you know people that that always only think about sound right when they hear most jazz guitar players they're like that would be really cool if they got their sound together yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and so then it was a, a and it wasn't the first guy or the first person that said that to me it, it took a, a few people for yeah. me to be like okay this is an issue like i got to deal with because well, you um, focus a lot on information, right? Yeah, exactly. Just trying to get the information, trying to get through the changes and all that stuff. So, and I, I did a gig. I was, I was telling somebody maybe that was doing an interview. I did a gig with um, Don Was, and he had a uh, Bob Weir on the gig, and a couple other guys. And you know, they just came with their roadies and they set up all their gear and just like play an open G chord, and it sounded like. A symphony. Mm. It was it's like just the right reverb, modulation, tone, overdrive. It's one chord, right guitar with a pickup. Everything's like wired a certain way. It's just like, oh yeah, these guys play stadiums. They're not playing jazz clubs. <laughs> like they, they're everything about the way that their sound works is like it's meant to hit thousands of people, not like. But it, it's. There's nothing that, even to this day, I still haven't figured out how they do that. <laughs> it's like amazing. Right? Yeah. But yeah, that's all they think about is like, how can I get this one chord voicing to sound like it's a, it's insane, you know? <laughs> yeah. Instead of a million voicings to sound good. <laughs> I mean, it's the language you're dealing with. I mean, that's that we just played. I mean, how many chords right. did we? <laughs> oh, we played a lot of chords, man. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's it's just it's it's somewhere you know the the middle ground would be nice to to get to for yeah. me at least you know um but yeah you had that guitar man it's a 1940 I, it? yeah us 150 yeah 
Yeah, that's that's that was my Holy Grail guitar. I finally got it. Yeah. 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 You're, you're you're officially I'm like a professional a, now. A, you're a professional now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, an adult. Yeah, a hundred air. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's an that's a, like a museum piece, man. It's amazing. Yeah, I played for I don't know twenty five years. I've been playing this one seventy five with mm -hmm. Charlie Christian pickup from the seventies. It's kind of like a it's like the reissue, but it doesn't it doesn't even sound close to the <clears> same. It's like right. the pickup's different. And the, the wood is all, I mean, it's just like a thick, heavy sound. You know, yeah. this is a real light, you know how old wood yeah, yeah. brightens it up and everything. So it has that woody kind of sound to it. How long have you had it? Oh, I got it in September. Oh, so yeah. not, man, you haven't, this is really the, my, maybe one of the first times you played it on a gig. I've Yeah, on a gig. A I've gig. recorded <laughs> with it three times already. Okay, cool. But I haven't played it out anywhere. This, yeah, this actually is the first time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see how it comes across. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know. I like to. I like to have a um, real transparent instrument. It's just mm -hmm. sort of. Uh, it can be a little too much sometimes. That one's really exposed. You know, such a bright sound. And well, I know so you came in with with no pedals. Just basically came in, plugged straight into the amp. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. It's going to be harsh sometimes, you know. There's going to be unexpected things that come out, but right. just roll with that. I mean, I like to, I like to try to see if how much I can kind of adjust in the moment and right. deal with it with technically just deal with it with the hands, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I get so distracted. I have a lot of pedals <clears throat> and stuff, you know, and uh, but. I get really distracted by it. So it becomes a whole other thing that I'm doing, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is another world, and I, I know you have it because I've heard you use that stuff on on other records. So yeah. I knew it was like a conscious thing. I was like, "You're bringing that guitar yeah. with just a cable." <laughs> Look, I gotta play. I gotta try to keep up with you, man. <laughs> I try to remember no. tunes and all that. So you know, <laughs> no. But yeah, it sounded great, man. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> so, man, I first your first record, Mirrors. I, I still. It's funny that I realized today, or maybe like a couple of days ago, that it actually was a long time ago. Mm. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking it was like maybe most like ten years ago. Mm. But yeah, that's 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 just a testament to how how much time is passing for me. But it actually came out before my first record. But I remember when I first heard that record and that that tune, Spiral. Yeah, that's some killing shit, man. Oh, so I was like, people still <laughs> like that record. I was just talking with Miguel about that record the other day. We were hanging yeah. out in the park. And he's he's on it, right? He's on he's yeah. on it for my first three records. Yeah. We had this band together, you know. Um, he's like, yeah, I get messages about that record. So it was two thousand five, you know. And uh, when you recorded it, was yeah. it? Did it come I out? I think I released it in two thousand six. Six, maybe. yeah, yeah. It says two thousand six. Yeah, somewhere. and it was yeah that was it was just a little overproduced. It's a little excessive, you know. But that's the way you are when you're at that age, you know. I think you want to get it all out in case <coughs> yeah. whatever, you know. Right. Um, <laughs> in case. You know, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, uh, you don't, you want to make an impression, I guess. You know, right, right. Thinking about that stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's interesting because I was not. Like people make records pretty early now, but I never wanted to make. I didn't feel like I had much to say. It took me a long time, and I exactly. guess you, you too. I like did the you same thing. So you were thirty or something almost. Or I something was like when that. I recorded that record. I think I was twenty six. Oh, or 26. 20, 26 or twenty seven. Right. So uh, I was thirty because I'm older than you. That's right. So, so um, yeah, I was thirty. Yeah. Uh, but. I, at least for me, I was like, well, no one knows who the hell I am, so there's no point in me making a record, <laughs> which is not the way that people think today. Uh, but for me, you know, I had already been playing with a, a bunch of people. Like, I had already been touring for like four years before that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and really, the two years before that record came out, I was really touring. And so then I was like, this is the time. And also, I had the money uh, to do it my own on my own instead of doing it for crisscross or, or fresh sound, which were the two options I had at the time. Right. And so I was like, well, I just did like a year of touring and I got a big tax return mm. uh, because all of that tax money was being taken out. Thank God from like uh, Joss's management and Liz Wright. And so I got this big tax return at the end of the year because 
I was basically on the road the whole time. So it was all per diems, like deductions and stuff. And I was like, they actually were doing their cool. I was was like, man, I'm just going to record a record. (laughs) And so I did it and put it out on my own. Um, and it is to this day, it was like the best thing I could have done. I mean, but was also, that, was it? That was between the lines. Between was, the lines. Oh, yeah. that was between the lines. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you know that, and especially at a, at during a time like this, like during a pandemic, I was like, I re-released that record, sort of like re-released on Bandcamp, mm-hmm. and you know whatever. It's like a year ago during this month of May, the the three records that I did on my own, like paid my rent for that month which was at the time of the during the pandemic with all the cancellations of all the gigs and stuff was like oh okay good that's one month taken care of yeah, you know yeah. but otherwise man i've never received any royalties from crisscross records or like for the three records i did for them or you know i mean i have but it, it's yeah. so little there's no way it would it would be anything substantial so yeah but yeah, and it's the same thing. Like I, I feel like we kind of, you wait. You were playing like people knew who you were. Like when you, when you, like for when you released that record, I was like, I know who Miles is, and I know he's a bad dude. So I'm gonna check this record out. It wasn't like who's this, you know? It was like, right. It's a little different now. I mean, I don't know. At that point, it was like, well, I'm making a record. I had got a little money from the monk competition that was, oh, right. that, that was how i got the money to do that record you know it still wasn't quite enough but i mean i just everybody and you still worked, might need to, everybody kind of worked yeah. for free and stuff but yeah but um except for the engineers but but <laughs> but, but uh yeah i mean you know it was it was, was like well okay i've been writing this music for almost 10 years or something at that right. point i've been writing yeah. it and rehearsing and we had that band and we were playing and stuff so it was it was yeah we were we were, we were kind of like it was already kind of ready to go you know it wasn't like thrown together you know yeah it's still the most i mean the score for it was like 60 pages long wow you know so it was scores for all my records have gotten smaller <laughs> as time goes. I think the last record is like five pages you know it's like no man you're, you miles is not good for the it's not good for the environment man he's just wasting way too much paper way it's too like, much PDF. canceled P- too many pdfs yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean so how, how, how essential uh was dan weiss on those records for you like especially that i think oh he's crucial yeah because yeah, did cause you guys I, really work on that stuff together or like uh yeah, some of it, well, yeah, some of it was like, at that time, I was really into Indian music, mm-hmm. and he was really, I mean, he got way deeper than I ever did, because I don't play drums. He, I, does I, he play tabla? He yeah, plays he tabla, plays tabla, and he yeah. plays at real, like, yeah. real high level, you know, he still practices every day, every morning, and all that, you know. Um, so he showed me a lot of stuff, and that mm-hmm. got me interested in these whole this whole rhythmic thing about... Um, I don't know, like that you could have this kind of detail and rhythm, you know. Right. Of course, in 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 jazz and stuff like that, you have it, but it's not it's not like it's it's a, more about the feel that you get, you know, than yeah. like rhythmic compositions that are fixed, you know, which is like this Indian thing, which is like these you know these long things that work out over time cycles and stuff, and they're calculated and they're sort of. So I was trying to figure out like some middle ground, you know. Well, can I use those things but still improvise and all mm-hmm. that? So I was, I don't know if I ever really succeeded, but I, 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 because those compositions were so long and complicated, that's what those things were, you know. That's why people are still kind of interested in them because they're all written out and they can kind of learn them off the page. Mm-hmm. Whereas my later stuff is like, it's more like free, you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he's and he still is. Uh, important collaborator for me we just finally did a duet record we've been trying to do for like 20 years we just did recorded it oh nice so we just mastered it actually so it's off getting uh what do you call it oh, like the thing on the lathe getting the things made for the vinyl okay so, nice yeah yeah I, I, you guys are that chemistry is crazy but also i think of i think of dan as this percussion like thinker like kind of and I think of you and guitar, like, you know, this book, or for example, like uh, we were talking about this earlier. I was like, I never had a, a good, I never did a book because I never felt like I had anything good to to talk about or a way to organize my thoughts in a, in a way that I feel like you two guys are like incredible at that stuff. Like just really being able to to have something interesting to to 
to, to think about and to talk about and to organize it in a certain way that, that gets people excited. But yeah, this is like your, I mean, when did this, this has been out for, I, I did at least you've been working on it for a while, right? I, yeah, I started about 10 years ago. This is the yeah. fundamentals of guitar. Uh, if you haven't already seen Miles' videos on this, um, talking about subjects from this book, it's, it's pretty incredible. Um, but yeah, super, super killing, man. I'm sure how that came about. I mean, it was, it was a time when I was, <clears throat> I think it was um, a time when I was working on concepts and I, my playing was really suffering, you know, because I was mm. working so much on like theory and composition. I wasn't really playing, practicing that much. And I was like, I need to get my guitar. I need to work more on the actual instrument. Yeah. I never, I wasn't that interested in guitar, really. It's just sort of like that's the thing that I have to use to kind of get the, uh, make mm -hmm. the sound happen or whatever. Cause I can't play anything else, so that's just <laughs> it, you know. That's all I have, you know. So, like, well, I got to get better at playing guitar, I guess. So I got to work on this, you know. And uh, and and I, I started doing some teaching, um, at that time. Mm -hmm. I hadn't really taught much before, but I I was invited to do some stuff like Banff. Vijay Iyer had me up there doing Banff for a few years and Dave Douglas and uh, um, and uh, and a few other things. Just, you know, these sort of workshop things and master classes and stuff. And I had been working with Steve Coleman and we did a lot of workshops and master classes. And so I had all these sort of things floating around and I'd organize them in these little pamphlets to give to people and be like, okay, here's pentatonic scales or whatever <laughs> like you know it's sort of like these little disconnected little things and i was like well i'm maybe i'll just write a book so i can just have a thing but i have a kind of a tendency to get a little excessively <laughs> obsessed with things so i, I yeah. it went into you know it went into three or four years of 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 writing you know well i remember the the so. first time i i kind of got hip to some of the stuff you're talking about in this book was the videos you did on tuning the guitar, which is like you would think after playing guitar for as long as I've been playing, like, I don't know how to fucking tune my guitar. <laughs> well, and that was my problem. I was like, why can't I tune this goddamn <laughs> guitar? Like, I'm sitting here. I'm, and it, what am I, 30? That's how you start the book, right? You start yeah. the book with like tuning, yeah, tuning yeah. the guitar, natural harmonics of, of the string. Yeah. And you kind of break it down in, a, in like in a scientific way, which you know, no, normally people are just like, you need to go out and get a tuner, man. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. But, um, but you know, the trumpet player doesn't sit there with a tuner hanging off the end of the trumpet. Just yeah. Tune, they just tune the trumpet. Right. Like, Come on, what's the big deal? You know? But yeah, that video, <laughs> that video, when I first saw that, it kind of blew my mind and it kind of gave me a little bit of insight on the way that you think about stuff. And I was like, wow, man. I was like, this, this is the way he thinks about tuning the guitar. Like, how do you, how are you thinking about everything else? <laughs> well, and, um, you did the same thing with triads. Like uh, I remember, you, I watched a couple, some of those um, a video on that. Like um, you're kind of just like all the different ways you can get triads on the on the guitar. Yeah, which is inc inc incredible. But like, and you were you were, you mentioned this before when we when I asked you about this. Is like you said if I was going to write a book, I want it to be like more than just a, an instructional book. It's, it has to be just like a well, I don't think I can. I don't think I could write an instructional book. I mean, I teach people guitar, you know, quite a bit, but it's not like this has, is not an I instructional never, book. This I never like use a, this book. I never even use that thing. Really? Just, yeah. To, I mean, teach people how to play guitar. Like, it's just like, okay, you hold the guitar like this. You right. got to move like this. You're doing this weird, you know, whatever. It's all physical, tactile stuff that you, mm -hmm. you know, and also the feel. If you're trying to teach, like, well, this is let's look at some George Benson or something. I mean, you know, whatever. Right. So like. That's not in this, you know, that's not... No, not, that's what I dig about it. So, that's why it was, it yeah. was the one book that I, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure most people who I, I come in contact with have a book, but it was the first book that I've actually asked for because I, I was like, man, can you bring that book? Because it's not, this is a book that it doesn't matter what level you at, you're at, you can pick up this book and check it out and be like, whoa, like that. I've never even thought about something like that. You know, so it's not the book like this is how you play a blues or like this is how you play jazz in one scale or something like that. This is like the fundamentals of guitar. Like it kind of almost like science, or at least for me that I haven't, I haven't, dove, I haven't dove into it yet. But it's more like almost very scientific kind of 
just music in general and like guitar and frequencies and uh, tuning and yeah there's i mean i, I yeah it's, it's all the stuff about styles mm-hmm. and all that is sort of like stuff i think you need to get with records you know and get yeah. with a teacher you know and 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 so this is just more refer- there's certain books that are like that are appealing to me that i read not read but you know sort of skimmed through or checked out parts i liked like Hemholtz on sensations of tone and Harry Park's Genesis of music and and certain visual books like the visual representation of quantitative information is like this famous book about how to present things visually so they make mm-hmm. sense and are clear you know yeah. as opposed to like a lot of paragraphs of writing in English which is hard for somebody you know from Brazil or something you know right right it's like oh, what are they talking about and it's like like you gotta try, like oh, just make a picture you know and, and so. And so, but of course, I had to learn really well how to use uh, drawing software, you know, mm-hmm. Adobe Illustrator. So this whole book is made with Adobe Illustrator, okay. for example, you know. But that's not that big of a deal. You just learn the program, you know. Right. Uh, it's like any other thing. You just got to sit and do it. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I appreciate that, man. I'm glad that you, that no, you it's, think it's interesting. I mean, yeah, for sure. It's it's it was more sort of like, well, if I was just going to make a a thing that I need to refer to sort of throughout the years, you know, right. because it's, you know, stuff is not really going to change. It's like, it's just what it is. It's just information. Every way to play three notes on the guitar. Right. If I'm thinking of, oh, I'd like to play some three note things. Let me just kind of open up a random page and mm, that's right, cool. Right. You know, whatever. It's really no pressure. It's because it's not linear. You know, mm-hmm. it's just, you just, it's just page, page, every page is different. So, you know, it's not a method, you know, I don't really believe in methods anyway. That, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. <laughs> it's like, I'm not... <laughs> Study my I'm method. Not, You'll I'm get from A, a to B. Yeah, it's, it's like, there's like, no A and B. It's just, you just yeah. go, you're here, you're My somewhere method else. was like, yeah. wake yeah. up, yeah. see how much money I got in my pocket, <laughs> walk to Tower <laughs> Records, uh, and buy some, you know, sit at the listening station with some headphones, pick out what records I was going to buy, and take them home and listen to them. <laughs> that was my method. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, that sounds cool. What was that? Oh, that was that. Oh, now I know what that is. Okay, cool. Um, man, when did you um, hook up? So I, I thought, because I thought, you had already, I was looking at your recording history with Steve Coleman, and it was after what I thought it would have been, actually. So you had already done, you had been playing with Jane, and you had done some of your own records, and then you kind of, I was, I was doing both those things at the same time. Okay. Yeah. But but recording with him maybe was a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. yeah it took a while to do some recording projects. I don't know why. It just wasn't recording. He had some things in the can or whatever. It was just changing recording companies or something like that. Yeah. yeah I started playing well, with him in like 2008. Okay. You know? and, and was that like a thing where you... Was that a conscious decision? Like, I'm going to try to get into this world or did it he already know about you and call you i'm a bit of like one of those like i don't want to be part of a club that'll have me as a member type, type <laughs> yeah, of thing, yeah. you know? but but so i don't it's not like get me in the club but yeah. but but it's more like well i, I do search out people individual people you yeah. know especially older people who know mm-hmm. things you know and so i've always been mentor oriented you know yeah and one-on-one teaching you know so um and there were certain concepts that I was interested in. And I was like, well, here's the person who's done all this stuff in this area. So let me search out that person, you know, and I don't know. I, I sent him a lot of emails and sent him some stuff in the mail. And it's like, can we talk about this stuff? And went out there and started talking about, you know, hours and hours of sitting talking about how one triad goes to another triad and <laughs> how Charlie Parker did this and that, you know, so, mm-hmm. you know, many, 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 many hours of, of that type of stuff, you know? And then, we start, it wasn't really about playing, and I wasn't angling to play, but I just, I just, I'm just, I'm kind of addicted to like learning stuff. I just want information, right. you know. Yeah. I don't really, it, it, you know, for better or for worse, I'm not so concerned about where that leads career-wise. I'm just sort of yeah, interested yeah. in where's the information, how do I kind of understand it, you know, to, so that I'm not trying to. Like, I have kind of a feeling of where I want to go and then who's done that thing, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, I'm sure you have stuff like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you seek those people out, right? Because you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You don't want to spend 10 years trying to figure something out when somebody's done it, you know? You, right. They can give you some information. Obviously, you, you know, you treat that with some sort of respect. You don't just take it and run with it, you know? You mm-hmm. say, like, I got this from here and all that, but... um but that's how things progress. If you spend your whole life 
recreating some something that somebody else did then by the time you're done you never <laughs> you didn't actually contribute something you know exactly so, yeah you know, i mean that's the whole the whole thing is to kind of build on it but um but yeah that was that was sort of it was coming just esoteric stuff esoteric music theory but it wasn't like yeah. steve was doing like this because i know he did like these kind of jazz gallery workshops and stuff but you were like actually a part of that oh I, and, I, and from the band perspective like people i was were usually i was usually yeah out. helping yeah. to conduct those things and right. doing, playing the examples and stuff you know but you you contacted him individually or like i want to get together we had some people in common like mm -hmm. i was playing with jonathan finlayson i was playing in his yeah, band, I was playing in Jen Shoes band and, and uh a few a bunch of other people sort of like um in in circles you know um but yeah that was a a certain time when i was trying to uh i was really trying to get to the next level rhythmically mm -hmm. you know because the indian thing was like that was something that had kind of reached a point where i was studying this little drum and i was my teacher was like okay now you need to come to india and to apprentice with i was like no i play guitar like i don't <laughs> this is not my path you know right it's not really like that for me so so um steve's thing is is kind of opposite of that long those long <clears throat> calculated things it's it's layered kind right. of counterpoint rhythmic counterpoint you know and uh um coming from a more point of like getting things to feel a certain way as they are as they relate to each other mm -hmm. you know not so much like this is where it starts and ends but more like this is how it connects you know right things like that so i was really interested in that i want to be like what's that all about you know and so you know it was another 10 years working on that <laughs> stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> was ty Sean, who was playing drums in that band uh it was just different drummers i mean yeah. was sometimes marcus gilmore oh yeah uh not ty Sean, i didn't play with ty Sean with that but uh daphne's a little bit and, oh cool and then uh, mostly sean rickman you know, okay who, was, who i play with still with my band so, yeah yeah um but yeah a big big you know i basically had two main mentors one is rodney jones and steve coleman you know yeah so um i'm not, man i really i have it's, it's so funny like I, I know i don't really know rodney uh but i've had a couple of encounters with him which are which i'll are classic like one was when I first moved to New York and I was, I was right during my first year at new school and the new school hired me to play at this, this gig at the boathouse in central park, which was a party for the Montreal jazz festival. So everyone involved, uh, from the organizer administrative end of Montreal jazz festival was there like Claude knobs, the, the, you know, the, and, uh, but George Duke's band was playing mm. the main show and I was playing on a gondola. And going through the the little wow. the lake of you know the little what uh, do you mean like with you other know there's people? like gondolas yeah, you can know, you can rent a gondola in some like with I was like people? on there with like a uh, they gave me like a battery powered amp <laughs> <laughs> with somebody else like yeah and I was just playing solo guitar and there's this guy like fucking like <laughs> you know rowing this gondola and like couples would get on wow. or just people that were at the party and it was classic. So I was doing this gig, and, and I have two big memories from this. Well, three. Uh, that we, the third one I won't get into. because uh, But the first one was I was playing solo guitar in this gondola uh, while George Duke's band was playing in the main room. Uh, and this woman got on the boat, on the, go on the gondola, and I started playing My Romance. Mm. And, I, and at that point, I had gone through all the tunes I could play solo guitar at the point. And I was like, I'm gonna just going to start trying tunes because right. nobody, nobody's really like, yeah, yeah. you know, who cares. And I started playing My Romance. And right before I started playing it, I was like, I don't really remember this tune, but I'm just going to try to play it. And then I, I played the... And then a woman on the boat said, oh, My Romance, my favorite song. <laughs> and I was like, fuck! Oh! <laughs> God damn and then it turned out to be Patty Austin, like a singer. Wow. And then I totally butchered the tune, and she was like, you know, she was so nice about it, but she was just like, damn. She was like, okay, well, thanks for playing rhyme, trying to play rhyme, my romance. But then after I was done with my little portion of the gig, I was hanging because George Duke's band was playing, and it was Rodney Jones, Terry Lynn Carrington, and uh, Christian McBride, yeah. quartet. And I was so young and naive 
at the time that I went up to Rodney and I was like, hey man, I'm playing, like I was just playing like whatever, I was playing on the gondola. And, <laughs> and I was like, could I play a gig, I could play a tune with the band. Uh. And then Rodney looked at me, he was like, you want to play with, with this band? <laughs> you know? He was like, uh, I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. And then, but he did. He let me play. Because uh, I, I, I don't know what I, I said something to him. And he was like, okay, I, I have a feeling you can play. Right. And he was like, oh, but you better play. Right. And he kind of gave me, he was like, I'm going to let you play, but you better fucking play. Yeah. And so I played, uh, and we played one uh one finger snap <laughs> with like me, George Duke, Christian. Did you, did you and call Charlene. that dude? I called it. Yeah. I, I looked at George. He was like, what do you want to play? I was like, I don't know. One finger snap. And he was like, okay. He looked at the cats and Christian was like, okay. <laughs> it's like, and we played that. That's and a, it was, it was hilarious, man. Wow. Uh, but that was an, an insane night, man. There was a lot of other stuff happened. But yeah, that was a couple of things. But Rodney, <laughs> that was one of the, the, the run-ins I had with Rodney. Was That was the first one. And then he always remembered that. And then the next time I saw him, I was doing, uh, he was teaching at Manhattan School of Music. Or no, no, no. Uh, yeah, at Manhattan School of Music. I was there for some reason. And I was telling him about this gig I had at Dizzy's. It was a, a guitar battle thing. It was some stupid thing that, that Dizzy's had put together. Like a guitar, <laughs> guitar battle. Who are you battling? <clears throat> yeah. Was, and then... Oh, it was this guy named Eric Johnson, but not the Eric Johnson, the rock dude. Yeah. That's super, another super Eric killing. Johnson, yeah. It was another Eric Johnson. I thought it was the Eric Johnson. And I was like, hell yeah. I want to <laughs> fucking meet Eric Johnson. And I want to get, I want to get schooled like officially. But no, it was this old school, like kind of dude, Eric Johnson that played with like some organ players and stuff. I had never heard of. Eric Johnson. Okay. And he was uh, really an asshole to me, man. Yeah. Like really kind of, but also like, I don't even want to get into it. But I remember telling Rodney about that. He was like, what are you doing? Where are you playing? I was told him about that gig. He was like, he was like man, he's like, I'll battle you. <laughs> he was like, you want to fucking battle? I'll battle you. Tell, call him up and tell him I'll do the gig. <laughs> it was before I actually did the gig. It was, it was such a weird gig. Yeah. But that, yeah, that, that sounds that, about right. That sounds about right. Yeah, but that, yeah. that cat was not having it. Uh, the the Eric, the other Eric Johnson, he was. He was, yeah. He was just super like condescending. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you, I thought Roddy was gonna say I'll battle Eric Johnson, but he said he'll battle. Oh no, Eric. he was like, you want to? Yeah. He was like, oh, they called you to battle. He was like, who are you playing? He was like Eric Johnson. He was like, he was like man, tell him, tell him I'll do it. I'll battle you, motherfucker. <laughs> he was kind of like, you want to battle? I'll battle. <laughs> he likes to throw down. I mean, our lessons would be like. An hour and a half of rhythm yeah. changes at 250 beats per minute. You know, just yeah. sort of like continuously <laughs> playing rhythm, trading courses on rhythm changes. It'd be like, yeah. okay, it's going to just wear me down, you know. So yeah. it's, uh, I mean, that's real though. I mean, that's real. Oh man, yeah. That's real uh, re repetition, you know. That's real, you know. I would love to have yeah. spent more time with Rodney, man. I really yeah. regret like my time at New School not really kind of seeking him out and uh and trying to get some lessons. I mean, I can still do it now, I guess. Maybe I should. He's still, <laughs> he's still doing it. I mean, he's, he's kind still of semi-retired right? semi from, like, the institutions, but he's still Well, still I kind teaching. of sort of yeah. took his place at MSM. Oh, is that right? Oh, okay. Because he stopped teaching there. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe he stopped, I think, uh, I'm not sure whose well, place I took. he was teaching at Juilliard for a while. Yeah, know? he was doing and the Actually, Juilliard. I went back to Juilliard and kind of did a whole other thing there. But, but uh, yeah, and then now he's he's doing, like, you know, online master classes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Which he yeah. should, man. I mean, who is... I mean, anybody who's played those gigs that he's played, man, it's like... He's a master of feel, you know? That's yeah. It's all about feel for him. He's like, how does it feel? You know? Like, I don't care about what... I don't care what you do if it doesn't feel good. Right. Know? I don't care what hip language you're using. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> what kind of scales and blah, 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 you know? So... That was good for me because I don't feel like that's a very common position to take, you know. In not sort today. Of, not in, in which the, is you know. It, today it's like if you do say that, people look at you like, "What do you mean?" But I'm playing this hip thing that I learned yeah, from YouTube like, well, it or feels something. Good to me. Yeah, no, but, but, <laughs> I know it feels good to yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. So you know, but you know, his thing was like, "No, it, it, that doesn't. That's not it." You know, and right. so he would just say, you know, he'd say that, and it's fine. I mean, it's okay. I was fairly thick skinned even in those days it's pretty, yeah. pretty hard to hurt my feelings you know so I was like okay well, I guess I'm make an adjustment you know so I'm trying too hard you know or whatever and just need to focus on getting in the pocket or whatever you know and uh, 
And his thing is all about that. I mean, having played with James Brown and having played with, yeah. you know, all these people, I mean, you know, it's just... The grooviness cats. Yeah. And him I mean, and George Duke. Yeah, you know, and, and he, he introduced me to those, like, you know, like Lonnie Smith and Fred Wesley and all those type of people he was playing with at that time. Mm -hmm. So that was really impressed upon me in those days. I was like, well, you got to yeah. get your feel together, you know. Yeah. Because then if without that, it's kind of... It's pointless. It's kind of no point, yeah. yeah. So. How did you, uh, the, the other thing, and I, I've been hearing a lot about this, uh, is the, the Monk Project. So you, which is, this is an insane undertaking, is like you recorded the complete works of Thelonious Monk, which I don't think anyone has ever done, right? People have, you know, they do Monk tributes, but who? Well, there's a few precedents. Um, there's a, uh, at the same time I was recorded, well, there's a, there's a, there's a, pianist in, uh, a European pianist named Alexander von Schlippenbach did some mm -hmm. version of, of it, but it's sort of like there's a lot of medleys and stuff like that. Okay. It's not quite like so like distinct all the pieces and all that, but right. that's from a while back. And then um, at the same time I was doing this, Frank Kimbrough did a mm -hmm. quartet version of all 70 tunes. Oh, wow. Yeah, I okay. don't know if you heard that. I didn't hear that, no. Yeah, it's killing. It's great. Um, Rufus Reed and mm -hmm. uh, Billy Drummond and, and, um, and uh, Scott Robinson. Okay. Um, but this is solo guitar. This is solo yeah, guitar. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you've studied Monk's music a fair amount, I'm sure. You know, like, it's so, like, it just keeps going. Like, there's so many right. levels. There's so many levels of detail, you know. And yeah. So, well, how, how far do you, you know, it's like, how far do you go with it? There's a lot of people who play everything. They want to get all the voicings and every little line that Monk yeah, plays. Sure. I mean, yeah. How did you balance that out? Like thinking about it. Like, did you try to, did you try to come up with your own thing with the tunes, or did you try to stay true to a lot of his, you know? It's, it's a, I think it's a weird balance. It's so it's sort of like, um, well, wh what, a, wh you know, what's sort of the essence of the tune, or what is the, you know like these these tunes if you're playing like what do we play uh coming on the hudson right we play coming on the hudson in four and one right. today so let's say coming on the hudson for example that <clears throat> yeah. tune is very very specific right. like like those things were not arrived at like randomly like he's mm -hmm. set and if you listen to monk sitting there playing like what's that recording he's playing i'm innocent uh, innocent I'm, I'm getting sentimental over you he's mm -hmm. playing it yeah. for like i don't know 90 minutes or something he's sitting there and really trying like he's really you know he's working it out right, he's right. Very, same way you work out anything but it just is on tape you know and arriving at a choice through long long process you know right and imagine it's your own composition it's not an arrangement but it's your own thing i mean what are you going to do change that you know right i mean like that <laughs> well, i'm not i'm not going to do i'm not going to change that tune because i think it would sound cooler to put a different chord on this like reharmonize it or something right, like right, that yeah. it seems ridiculous to me so <laughs> so uh so i didn't i didn't do that i didn't okay. reharmonize anything for example yeah um i didn't, you know and then the melodies are kind of like the same thing like you don't can't really change the melody right like that's just that's what it is you know so the only thing I really did was with rhythm, you know, just right. rhythmically. Uh, and I feel like the music invites that a little bit. It's playful in that way. Mm -hmm. I think there's a certain point where you can break it, you know. Yeah. And you can go too far. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I don't feel like oh. I have the authority to be messing with these compositions that much, you know, sort of just play the tunes and, you know. Right. Of course, I talk to people that are even more conservative than me. Like I was talking with Lage about it. He's like, well... Mm -hmm. You know, he took a lot of liberties and this and that. You know, like yeah, you know, I mean, this this is this is this music is you know it invites it invites your personality to come in a little bit, but um, so different people uh, will decide what is sort of like uh, messing with the tune or not. You know, like like if you take it outside of a swing element for mm -hmm. example you know maybe put it in a different time signature or something like that you know is that doing something you know is that um is that the same type of thing as reharmonizing for example i don't know well i have a thing where it's like there's a thing which is reharmonizing and then there's something else 
like substitutions. Substitutions to me are functional harmony right. that works with the original harmony. And, right. s- and reharmonization is like, it's something that really is just, it could be completely random. Right. Whatever fits over this melody. Right, right. And sounds cool to the person doing it. Uh, <laughs> so I'm all for subs. Right. You know, reharm, sometimes it gets into that thing where it's like, well, if you reharm it enough, you might as well just keep going and just write another melody. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always interesting to talk to people on, uh, because Monk's music is, it's, it's sort of like West Monk. I, I have a feeling like, I put Thelonious Monk and West Montgomery sort of in the same bag as far as you can just play a Monk tune and play it the way Monk played it, and it sounds incredible. And you can play a, a, a West tune and just play it the way that West played it, all the same voicings, octaves, right. everything, and it sounds incredible. But not other, I don't feel like a lot of other people's music is that easy to grasp. Uh, I, I, not easy, but you can't just do that like with a herbie tune or something like I, it, it seems a little bit more slippery with like herbie or or, or wayne mm-hmm. it's I, I guess it's because as being a guitar player i can i know kind of more or less what wes is playing on the right. guitar and it's it's all kind of it's hip but it's kind of stock voicings and stuff like that like common grips uh, and monk's thing it's i don't know I think for piano players, it's all, it could kind of also get into that thing where, like, if you hear a piano player playing Monk, they almost always play what Monk plays. It, that's but, a, this is a harder thing. I was talking with with Kimbrough about that. You know, um, rest in peace, man. So, oh yeah. But um, uh, that's a challenge, man, as a piano player to play Monk because you got to. I mean, you, it's like, what are you gonna? Are you, are you gonna go that way? Are you gonna go another way? You know, as as a guitar, it's kind of like, well, it's already, you've already. It's already put through the filter of your instrument, so it's going to sound right. different, you know. And plus, that monk's music fits pretty well on guitar because of the nature of how he played piano is more open it's, voicing yeah, and stuff exactly, like that. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of like a, a seventh in the bass with a mm-hmm. thing in our cluster on the top and something like that. Herbie, I mean, with these crunchy things, I mean, it's, it's like, hard to get that stuff on the guitar. Yeah, so you can't, re- that's what I mean. It's like yeah. you can kind of play what monk plays and it gets by on a guitar or for sure on piano. But Wes, for sure, it works on guitar because he played it on guitar. Yeah. Uh, and the other, like Wayne and Herbie and Miles, and that, that yeah. stuff is really hard to pull off on a guitar uh, as far as doing it the way it's on the record. Yeah. I'm with you, though, on that, on that reharm versus uh, substitutions thing. I mean, like, substitution, like, there's, like, certain tunes, like Skippy, for example. Mm-hmm. It's, like, basically a big circle of fifths with some stuff in it, you know? Yeah. And, like, when I played it on there, I didn't, I allowed any version of circle of fifths because they yeah. all end up in the same place. They're all functionally the same thing. Yeah. You know, so you go down by, you go down by fifths, you go down by semitones, you go up mm-hmm. by whole steps, you know, any of the, oh, down by major thirds, any of those things, they all arrive in the same place. Mm-hmm. They're all functionally the same. So I sort of just did that. I allowed that. Okay. You know, yeah. Yeah. Allowed myself to do that, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, various, various other things, but like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's sort of like, I don't know. It's a, it's an interesting problem. This is something that definitely took me many many years to, you know, get the gumption to, to try to do because I'm intimidated by that body of work. You know, it's it's like it's well, yeah, it's, 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 it's like a lot. It's it's already well documented. Um, it's, yeah, it's, everyone has done it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But so in that that regard, but but basically anything could be that. Like it's it's like me with doing standards any kind of standards yeah it's like well i mean keith has done it keith jarrett chicoria like you know who who else bill evans has played every standard frank sinatra sung every standard like i mean at some point everyone has done it yeah but um i i feel amongst music though it's it's another thing to do it on on guitar it's it's it's, it's a little bit different i, I still think like it's open <laughs> yeah but I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. Like I mean, playing with s- standards, it's it's just like yeah. Well, what what are you gonna do? You're gonna try to change it so much that no one recognizes the tune. Are you gonna try to play it the way it was written? Or are you gonna try to do it a little bit somewhere in between? Um, that's the beauty of it. I, I don't know. I feel like it, it. That that material just never gets old. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter who you are. You you never get ter- as long as someone can play. Like you never get tired of hearing it. Kind of. 
But was, for sure, no one on guitar has done this. Well, <laughs> no maybe one it'll has be this. one of those things like, here's a version, and now maybe other people will do it. You know, it's sort of like one of those things like, well, this body of work is here, and maybe it's just an idea that is put out there, and now other people right. can do it. You know, I don't know. Maybe but you did this thing. on, you like, so you have records on Steeplechase. Oh, no, sorry, not, not Steeplechase. Uh, Sunnyside. Sunnyside, yeah. Sunnyside. Um, Pie. Yeah. Sunnyside. But this you did on your own, I think? This I did on my own. I mean, I... I I pitched it to Pi, but it's not really there. I mean, I kind of knew they would not, not be interested in a six CD set of <laughs> covers. First of all, they don't do covers. Check right? it out. I got this idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah. Solo guitar. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Solo guitar. Oh, you can stop there. <laughs> yeah. You can stop there. No, we're not Stop interested. it solo. <laughs> uh, doesn't matter. Yeah. So. No, this is just me in my basement, you know, and, and, yeah. uh, and then I, I got it sort of cleaned up a little with Liberty. You know, I took it over to him to oh, okay. kind of balance it out. Because oh, my cool. mic thing was not so great day to day. You know, I, I didn't mm -hmm. do it all in, continuously. I did it on and off and, right. you know, for a year or so, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, he hooked it up to the balance and got it kind of sounding consistent. And, oh, cool. And that's it, you know. Not that much to it, except that it's just sort of... Uh, this got to kind of, it's just about doing stuff consistently over a certain amount of time, you know. And, yeah. Uh, and then you get it done. It's not more music than, you know, what a lot of classical musicians do, recording a well-tempered clavier or something oh, like yeah. that. You know, I mean, it's just, I don't think that that's sort of a standard thing to be doing in our area. But, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's a good challenge, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. for sure, man. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't, I mean, half of these tunes is like, some of the I mean, tunes are some pretty. some some monk tunes. I'm like, okay, I have a really good feel for maybe how this could work solo guitar, but some other tunes, like, yeah, some, some of those early tunes. I are mean, really the, gnarly, <laughs> like <laughs> hump and horning in and those kind of tunes. Those are rough. Yeah, yeah those are rough ones. It took a while to get those together. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man, killing. Well, um, yeah, man. Let's see. I mean, we could we could talk. I mean, I'm sure there's a million things we could talk about from stuff in this book, but um, I might just, yeah. Yeah, it's it it's uh. You know, a lot of guitar books focus on harmony. You know, mm -hmm. so this one is divided into pitch and then rhythm. You know, so okay. rhythm is the second half because it's you know, it's like. What is your right? I mean, all the sound is coming from this right hand, right? So. Right. So, are you going to work on that mm -hmm. at some point? You know, so it's right. sort of like it's all, you know, up here. There's, know? Yeah, there's, this is not like, there's nothing in here about, it's just rhythm or or, or pitch. So, yeah. it's it's not like you're not talking about how to hold the pick and like do uh, like... Yeah, there's, no, there's nothing about how to hold the pick, but it's just sort of like, well, don't forget that all the sound is coming from here. You but know? everything is very visual. Yeah, there's a lot of visual stuff because it's sort of like, Mm. anybody can see it you know yeah it's not it's not it's not trying to be um keeping people out of the club type of stuff right you know? yeah yeah yeah. Uh, sure yeah that's great maybe that's just a hang up i have about not being in the club or something huh. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, no. Just, I just never liked that old thing like we have our special words that we use that you know nobody else can understand you know? <laughs> Like <laughs> all that stuff, oh, your sort of altered or melodic, whatever, blah blah blah, minor right. scale or whatever, you know. It's like yeah, that yeah. Stuff. Come on, man. <laughs> exactly. So what's what's um, what have you been doing in the pandemic, man? Like, oh, man. Uh, I, mean, I mean, you got. I mean, I know you got kids and yeah. you got a family and stuff. Recording. You recording. Know? Yeah, I did an early pandemic record. I did one in April. Like in the height of the oh, wow. madness, okay. you know, <laughs> like a, because I was supposed to have a tour with my band. It was band Trickster. It's like a quartet. Um, yeah, I was gonna ask you where where is this where because you have a couple of albums with Trickster. Yeah. Um, so I that's mean, the name of the band. That's the name of the band. Okay. And so we did two studio albums, and then we were planning to do a big tour for that second album, mm -hmm. in, um, like I don't know a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, of course, it didn't happen, and and I was like, well, I gotta, you know, do something, you know. So we, I did like a, a lot, a, like a, concert film, 
you know, like at home concert film, you know, okay. where we where we just record it all separately and put it together, you know. Yeah. And uh, that was kind of wild. It was a weird process because it was like I wanted it to be like a concert, not like a click track. Yeah. You know, so I, I sang the whole thing and then everybody played along with me singing. <laughs> <laughs> and I erased my singing, of course. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, and then, yeah, did, and then I did a real studio album just recently with the same band, all new material. Duo record with Dan Weiss. That was a big deal. Uh, yeah, video. right. Kill him. That was some commission projects. And, you know, that's just... Are you doing, like, the, a lot of the grant stuff? No. It's funny. I was running today. And I almost took a picture of this. Like, see, you know, people always throwing out away their stuff, their books on the street, you know? Yeah. Like, throwing, or throwing away furniture or whatever. But I always like to look at the books, you know, and I saw one. It was, like, grant... The grant or searching for grants and it was a book was thrown out on the street. I was like, Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. yeah. No, I just I'm not really doing I mean I have one grant um that I've been used that I've been that I was it was like a not one that you apply for. It was one it was called the Shifting Foundation. Okay. And it is sort of like they invite you to apply. So right. I that that has been a big help. That is a big help for these projects because they're expensive, you know. Yeah. Um, of course, you know that but I mean, um I'm sort of doing it with a producer and sort of like more higher level than just like let me get it done as fast as possible type of right. thing. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I I don't know all the the applying. I kind of kind of fell off that whole thing. It's mm-hmm. like, <laughs> I had yeah. some luck. I had some luck about fifteen years ago, and then it kind of you know. Yeah, I've never really done any of the grants. Yeah, I mean. It's a whole skill that you got to keep on. Yeah, it's a whole nother, It's a yeah. whole nother world. No, yeah, like, yeah, it's a yeah. whole thing. And I don't, I don't, I don't have the will in me to really try to come talk about myself so much. It's just sort of <laughs> so. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's terrible, you know. Um, yeah, no, I'm in the same boat, man. Yeah, it's like I, just, <clears throat> I was like, I'll just keep, keep trying to. Do it. I mean, luckily, in the, in the, you know, in the, and, and of course, it's nice to get a big chunk of money, but it's like. Um, yeah, I've, I've always just been like, okay, cool. I'll just try to keep working. And it's like, I mean, if somebody comes to you and says, hey, I like what you're doing. I'd like to support it. You know, that's cool. But that's I'm, happened but, before. But like trying to sell it and be like, oh, my project's about this and this and this, you know, and it's like trying to tailor it to what's happening right, right now or whatever, you know, it's what you think might. <laughs> man, like, speak, speaking of, uh, man. It's all some bandwagon stuff. That, you know, I, I, one of my heroes now is uh, Jochen Rukert. You know, oh, yeah. you know Jochen. Yeah, so Jochen, we, I did a record with him where he he wrote a fake press release. Oh. And he wrote it basically like a grant uh, application kind of press release for himself. Yeah. And he sent it to all the major publications and some people printed it. like they And they were just like, yeah, Jochen Ruka is, is searching for his, uh, you know, his really... Uh, searching deep within Indian music and stuff like this. And it was like, he, he went in, it was like, basically he just kind of like figured out like the whole grant thing and, and, uh, <laughs> and put it into like a formula almost. And then they wrote a fake press release based off of that. Yeah. And then <laughs> people actually were like, yeah, we can really hear like how he was thinking about this thing and this thing. And, and his music really has nothing to do with anything except his own fucked yeah. up like mine. <laughs> yeah. He's hilarious. Oh, I mean, I love Yoko, and he was so happy. He was yeah. like, "They fucking printed it," and he sent it out to every everybody. You know, they in the have band. like programs that will write fake academic papers and stuff. Like they had. Oh this, man, that's this, amazing. There was some some people got in trouble. I forget who it was a little while back, but they wrote these f- outlandish fake yeah. academic papers and sent them <laughs> off to peer-reviewed kind of journals. Yeah, and yeah. got published. Nice. And, and like. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a big scan. I was like, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you know, there needs to be some adjustment here, you know. So yeah, but uh, because yeah, it's that thing. It's like the thing of like, well, you know, are you going to, you know, when you sorry, man, you mean it? Oh, you can, you can actually you, just pull it when pull you. It uh, yeah, I keep changing my posture. <laughs> you know, I don't know what I don't know. I'm to say something controversial so i should stop no it. good no I, I don't know i mean it's just it's just i feel like um don't worry man nobody's watching in the academic yeah in, <laughs> it's like conan i like i do the conan <laughs> We've been going don't for worry two man hours. no yeah. one's watching man <laughs> <laughs> i like that podcast it's pretty funny yeah I, I, i'm a big podcast consumer but yeah 
but no, it's, it's just it's just the if you want to um, be inclusive, you know, <clears throat> like don't like like why why is the language of academia and, and all these things so opaque and so hard to deal with? And like it's just it's, I feel like there's this weird weird duality like in 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 the academic world i'm a little bit involved in the academic world because i teach at university of michigan you know yeah you teach you know uh, are you teaching a temple now i teach man i'm teaching at three schools now msm temple and queen's college right so so at msm and queen's college you have like the conservatory vibe and temple is more like you're inside of a larger academic right. thing, right yeah. so maybe you get a little taste of that but there's just a lot of like you well, get a good taste of everything yeah queen's college is in like you know, just come. Just anybody who's interested. <laughs> <laughs> I just I did a little bit there too. Yeah, I don't know. I just I just don't want to. I, I I've never been. I I went to you know I went to Harvard as an undergrad and, and I was always really turned off by all that that the 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 high high academic um, uh, sort of. The club, you know. Yeah. I just yeah. never, I never liked. I mean, I, I just, I, I just felt like it doesn't have to be that, that difficult. Like we can just enjoy high, beautiful things without having it be, you know, so pretentious. You know. <laughs> right. It's yeah. Like, you know. So. <laughs> you know. I mean, I don't know. I like, feel like. I, I mean, you like can talk music. about Charlie Parker, like, and and be extremely pretentious about it, but it's it's folk music, you know, and and like that's it's cultural, you know? and it's not and, really, you know, I don't think those guys were digging. I think they're, you know, I don't think they analyze their stuff anywhere and anywhere near to the the extent that people are analyzing it today. Or well, I mean, not in some in the same way, you know. I mean, certainly Monk had a science about what he was doing, you know, and so did Charlie Parker. But it, you know, it's like the, the people that come afterwards and say, "Well, the bebop scale and all this stuff," and it's like, right. I mean, come on. But know, I mean, as far like, as like <laughs> Charlie Parker, like kind of going to Dizzy and being like, "Can you write this down for me?" You know, yeah, stuff like yeah. that. It's like, I mean, wow. I mean, think, to just think that everything was just in his head is kind of insane, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, I guess maybe the the I don't know how it is with you, but you know, the 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 farther I get, I just sort of get more sort of specific in what I'm interested in, you know. And oh, I'm and, super, yeah. You know, yeah, I'm kind of like, sp well, specific you know, now. when you're young, you want to get everything. And I feel mm -hmm. like, I mean, with my students now, it's really like that because everything is there, their fingertips, you know. And so, yeah. like, it's too I mean, easy you, now. Like, before really... it used to be like you grab what you can grab yeah. at the, at the yeah. point. And now it's like everything you can grab at any second of the day. Yeah. So what do you go for? And everybody knows that, and every student's heard this thing a million times. Well, in our day, it was hard to blah, 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 and you had to wait for the record and order it and whatever, and <laughs> dig through the records. And, and But, it's, you know, it's, you can't really communicate that in, in a meaningful way, you know, except to say, like, well, you know, let's just spend some time in this yeah. thing. Let's spend it's, some time here. Spend some real time here and, like, really try to engage, you know. So, um, I... Uh, Do you still have your all all your records and stuff? Oh yeah, I mean, I, at some point I I ripped all my CDs to MP3s, but I still have them all in these binders where I have them all yeah, organized yeah, yeah. by by um, instrument, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I have record, I have vinyl, you know, and I have all my tapes, and I have all my lesson tapes, you know, yeah. I have all my analog stuff. It's all it's in these bins, and it's, it's stupid. I don't know. I why. kept I kept all my favorite stuff. Yeah. But I, every time I move, I throw. I'm like. This CD kind of sucks, and I throw that. <laughs> but like all of my favorite, You're like stuff, wait, that was my CD. <laughs> yeah, all my favorite stuff is right like behind that curtain. It's like all. Yeah, like, I still but listen to a lot of the same it's stuff. It's very yeah. specific yeah. now. It's just like yeah. I fucking love every record that's in there. Is like I fucking love this record. Yeah, like, yeah it's that yeah. kind of like serious. Yeah, I mean, you know, you gotta f you find your lane, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe different lanes, variety of lanes, but it's sort of like you know. Uh, it's. It, I feel like it's a hard challenge for people now that are like just, just in this thing where everything is out there and it's all sort of equal. You know. Yeah. It's like we were talking about before, like <laughs> learning instructional stuff on YouTube. It's like how do you how do you differentiate what is what's real information, what's kind of bullshit. You know. So, yeah. You know. Well, my thing is like. Right. 
if I if I can't find a recording of the person who is talking about something in a book or on a video, then I'm not going to listen no, to that's it. Good. <laughs> that's a good test. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, has that person actually done the work? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, not not the research, but I mean, has he played? Yeah, yeah. Or she has? Have they actually done been paid to do what they're talking about? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Mm -hmm. If they, yeah. Otherwise, they went to school. They yeah. paid for someone to tell them what now they're talking about you know yeah they just had you know the two thousand dollars to buy a camera <laughs> instead of buying <laughs> instead of buying records or buying a, another instrument they bought a camera right right and a, and a microphone and then now they're on youtube you know mm. and so yeah it's like can you can you, you now know, we're look, on youtube and now we're on youtube but it's only because of the <laughs> pandemic so I, I used to say you know but you'll never see like this nifty thumbnail of me being like you know, like, uh, well, now you will since you just <laughs> yeah, did it. Now yeah. it's, that's Someone's going to screenshot it. But it's like, yeah. And now you just have to have like uh, oh, the 10 scales you need to play to survive as a jazz musician and then have like. Uh, a, I want to get it down to one, just one scale. Yeah, this one scale even better than uh, <laughs> the one scale you need to survive as a jazz musician. And then you have a nice thumbnail. And um, yeah. And if you. <laughs> <laughs> if you, yeah, you're probably gonna get there. That's what I did. I, when that set, I was just playing one scale the whole time, just different parts of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I heard when you went to the other part. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> I didn't. You don't. You, yeah. That's the part that nobody ever really plays. That second part. It's secret. Yeah. <laughs> it's the secret part of the scale. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, man. Oh, getting dude, silly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks, man. Uh, we could be here all night, but yes. Yeah, we, I, you know, we could talk about really getting into the weeds, but probably nobody wants to hear that. So about yeah. guitars and strings and gear and all that. So there's enough yeah. people talking about that on. There's YouTube. plenty. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty. We don't need the so. rig rundown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. All right. Well, thanks, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, man. Yeah. So uh, thanks everyone for if you're watching. Uh, are you this? This is gonna stay up, so uh, people will be tuning in from. Oh, forever? Forever, bro. Oh, man. You're on. You're online forever. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. Okay. Yeah, man. Yeah. Unless unless you ask me to take it down, man. I'll take it down. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, so this was episode 25. If you didn't check out the set already, it's online, so you can get that at least till Wednesday. If you would like to contribute, uh, you can uh, have a permanent link to that for twenty five dollars. And yeah. All right. Thanks, bro. All right. Obrigado, yeah. arigato. Yes. Obrigado, obrigado. Yes, thank you everyone.